Wow, look at all those coffee pots. Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hi there, food friends and coffee lovers. I'm Ralph, behind the camera. Yes, and welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And you know what? Um, we've had some requests, Ralph, from friends to sort of just do some basic things, show basic techniques about preparing foods and for entertaining yeah. and such and so I think that's a great idea and today we're going to talk about making coffee what gave you that idea well you know what we love coffee we drink a lot of coffee um, and we have a lot of coffee pots <laughs> yeah Kevin you know Kevin is quite the collector of all kinds of different periods of uh, percolators and old-fashioned coffee makers so that's great this is just a not even scraping the tip of the iceberg of well our, yeah collection. This, this really is just kind of what I have on one shelf uh, downstairs um, but what I wanted to do is sort of show people um, some different types of pots although for the most part everything here is some sort of percolator mm -hmm. with the exception of this this is a vacuum pot this is actually for making espresso but we're going to which we're going to get to in a bit but what i wanted to do first is talk about basically the method of percolating coffee if you have one of these wonderful old percolators which by the way they still make a number of manufacturers make percolators, uh, Cuisinart, um, West Bend, Hamilton Beach, uh, they, you can buy a brand new percolator, Farberware if you want. Oh yeah, that's uh, classic. And uh, matter of fact, this is a Farberware, and this is a relatively new one. They've been making this model for years. Um, and you know what's playing in the background, just by, just to quickly uh, interrupt, <laughs> a song called Java. That Al Hurt, famous, yes. uh, for Al Hurt, but written by the late, great Alan Toussaint, who just recently passed away, who was one of my favorite oh, New Orleans composers. That. Okay, and, um, Java, to, ab yeah. absolutely appropriate. So let's look at our, per our friend, the percolator, first. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll pick one. Now, these are all different electric percolators, and they're automatic. You plug them in. They go ahead, and they, they percolate the water through the coffee, and then... After it's the brewing cycle is done, it basically, the temperature lowers and it stops percolating and just keeps the coffee warm. All done automatically, you don't have to do anything. This is an example of a stovetop percolator, which isn't automatic, but the principle is the same. You put water inside, you fill, you have a stem, okay, right? The water boils up through the stem and then the water comes up to the top of this basket and goes through these holes, goes through the coffee grounds, the coffee goes back in and it's just a constant cycle. So you can make percolated coffee actually quite strong because it's basically going through itself over and over again, unlike a drip method, or now all the hipsters call it a pour over, but it's really a drip method, which we have over here. This is a Melita, and this is a Chemex. They work for pretty much the same, but they're they're drips. And you know, so, you know, I was going to ask you the um, thing that I learned recently from you, from uh, you know, because I don't make coffee too much, but every once in a while I have functions where I work where I have to make a large amount, and I made the mistake of thinking, oh, I was in a hurry, so I'm going to use warm water or hot water to get it going, and that does not work because the cold water triggers the thermostat. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about that. I will. Good. That's good that you brought this up. But I just this this uh, stovetop model you control okay. because you put this on top of the stove, you turn it on high, you get it perking, you turn the temperature down, and then when it's done, you take it off the stove. Did you talk about when that date's from, or where that, what year? This is from the uh, the mid-60s right so here, cool. I believe. Look, look at that design. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to use one of our pots here. Let's use this. This is my... This is my tried and true. Your old this stand is my, my standby, my go to. So, again, we're going to take everything out. You always want to make sure that the inside of your coffee pot is clean. 
So if you were to buy a vintage or an old coffee pot from a yard sale, garage sale, or flea mm -hmm. market, what would be the best thing, the first thing to do to make sure that it's ready to use? You clean it. You want right, to clean right, it but, thoroughly. You can right, use vinegar. But I mean, yeah, that's what they I want to hear. Um, there's uh, a couple of different products uh, on the market. Uh, uh, cleaners on the market. Uh, sometimes I use a little automatic dish uh, dishwasher. So um, Soap? Yeah, powder. Oh, okay. And I perk. I have that go perk through a cycle. That gets a lot of that out. But what happens is coffee is acidic, and it also leaves stains. The oil. There are the a lot oils of oils in, in there. coffee, yeah. right? And those stains build up on the inside of any coffee pot over time, and you don't want that residue in there because it does affect the flavor of the coffee. So you always want to start with a clean pot. So let's just start there, okay? Now, your coffee pot. What you mentioned something, Ralph, you start with cold water. Now you can run cold water out of the tap. I like to use cold filtered water. Um, I just think it has a nice, you know, taste. I'm going to do this here, four cups. So here's sort of the minimum amount that we can do in this particular uh, model. There's often a guide on the side, a little etching of yeah, the amount, the number of usually, cups. There's usually a calibration here on the side you'll see. I don't know if you can tell from here. It's actually five, six, seven, eight, nine, up to nine cups. Okay, so the water's in. We're going to put our stem in there. Okay, that that's again, that's where the water comes up from. Now we have our basket. Now depending on the kind of coffee you're using, the grind, and the type of percolator you have, sometimes you need to put a filter in here and sometimes you don't. What I love about this wonderful old West Bend flavor perk is these holes are very small and I don't usually use a coffee filter and I get hardly any grounds in the coffee. So if it's a fine enough um, mesh or, or, or holes in the uh, filter uh, metal part, you won't need to use um, a, a, filter. Cloth, a cloth or paper filter or anything. Now let's look at the Farberware. This has a little different uh, type Design. of a flow here. Yeah. And this actually, these, this actually could allow a Grounds. bit of coffee to go through. So here I would, if I was using this, I would use a filter. So. For percolators, there's basically two different kinds of filters. You have this, this is called the disc filter. Okay, and this is really easy. It's simply, fitted, see what I'm doing? It's fitted, it's fitted to, to go like right so. into there, okay. Okay, um, or this is called a wraparound filter, which is actually a square. You'll see it's got a hole punched in the middle, and then it's got a hole in each of the four corners and it goes like this. You put this one in first, you put your coffee in, and then once the coffee's in, see, you fold over kind of like tuck so. It, tuck it in? Yep. Have you ever uh, had to and improvise and use like a napkin or something like that? Um, I used a paper towel That's one That's what time. I mean. Yeah, yeah it worked. Uh, but this is, so this is the, this type of filter is probably the most secure. You're not going to get any grounds at all uh, using that. But like I said, sometimes the disc filter works just as well. All right. Now, the West Bend, I'm not going to use a filter. It's just not necessary, which is what I love about this old pot. However, whenever, before I put coffee in the basket, I always rinse it with just cold water. Ah. What that does is that puts water in the little holes here. Okay. And that just prevents any of the coffee dust from falling down. Oh, I don't know. Okay. okay. That's a little, nice little trick. So it creates almost like a little seal. I got the coffee from the fridge. Okay. When you, uh, if you don't, uh, depending on the kind how of often coffee you like to use. Or how often you use it. Um, it's good to keep it cold. Yeah, keep it cold. Okay. Keep it in the fridge or even the freezer. It'll last longer. Once you open the can of coffee, it starts to deteriorate. Okay. And even if you're not a coffee it. drinker, you got to admit how good that smells when oh, you open a fresh that? can of coffee. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm using. This is a standard coffee measure right here, okay, which is like a tablespoon. So in a drip method, you'd use a tablespoon plus for every cup plus one for the pot. So if I was making five cups of coffee, in drip, I would use f 
five measures of this plus one. That's okay. my method. Okay. However, on a percolator, I use less coffee because the water, rather than going through once on a drip method, the water goes through the coffee only one time. Percolator, the coffee, the water goes through the coffee many times, hundreds of times. So you know what? You don't need as much coffee. Okay? So I'm going to use... Like one for every two cups? I'm going to use, yeah, yes, one for every two cups. So I've got five cups there and I put in three. And then you know what? I always add one for the pot. Okay. So that's four. So let's... Basket goes in. The lid goes on the basket. And... I got a cord here somewhere. There we are. We will plug that in. The other thing I love about this coffee pot, it's so quiet. Okay, so now we're making percolated coffee. So there's cold water in there and um, coffee with a filter? No filter. No filter. No okay. filter in this one, but like I said, depending on the model you have, you might want to have a filter. I use a filter with this. That's I, a beaut. That is, and this is nice because it actually, you can see the coffee as it begins to percolate and get darker thing. and darker, yeah. Um, this is a poly perk. A little poly. This is, uh, was made by the Regal uh, company, and basically it's polyurethane and um, came in all kinds of fun colors. I bet that brings back memories for some of our viewers. Here's a, here's a larger poly perk. This is, uh, th this is called a pot party perk because it's a, a 22 cup okay, version of this but these are fun too but again great they're, colors they're a percolator just like the other ones twist off all plastic this has got a plastic basket you can see although it has a metal bottom and, and a metal stem some people you know don't like the taste that metal imparts into the coffee and some of these are aluminum and some of them are stainless steel uh, these are all stainless here, okay? So you know what? You can hear it starting can you to just, it's, Yeah, we'll, we'll see it coming up on the lid here pretty soon. And then while that's doing its thing, Ralph, I'm gonna get ready and we're gonna make some drip coffee. All right, we'll show folks how to do that when we come right back. Oh yeah, look at it, it's doing its thing. Yeah, it's starting to perk. So. Well, that's perking away. We're going to make some drip coffee. Um, now, I could use the, the grind coffee, uh, the pre-ground coffee like I did with the perk. But you know what? We're going to use, I've got some nice whole bean coffee here we're going to use for our drip method. Our drip method, okay. Now, in the drip method, you have to use a filter. Um, these kind of filters are for like uh, a Mr. Coffee, uh, uh, you know, an automatic drip uh, kind of a thing, okay? So we're not using that. For uh, this system, the Melita or the Chemex, what you need is like a cone filter. Here's a couple different sizes. This is a number four, this is a number six. And you can see they fit right, you know, like so. Right in and that's gonna basically do your hold your coffee okay as you make your as you make it now I have an electric stove so I use this little spacer because sometimes what could happen is if there's a little burr or anything uh, or a little char on the actual heating element of the stove it could actually crack the carafe which is relatively thin so you know what that's our insurance Just policy. Just to be safe, okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna make, we'll make uh, like four cups of, of that. Now, we're gonna be up on light drinking this <laughs> coffee. <laughs> we sure will. <laughs> I'm gonna, um, we're gonna start where we need water, and here's how I do it. I pour it into the carafe first. Uh -huh. Okay, we get to four there. All right, I've got four, I got it up to four here. I'm gonna use my little electric kettle, which I love. I oh, use so that, this all the time. That heats the water for you? That heats the water. Okay, if you had a regular tea kettle, you could do that. That'll heat it up in no time. In the meantime, while the water is boiling, let's get our filter in place. And 
we're going to grind our own beans. Now, there are all kinds of coffee grinders out there, and you can spend a ton of money if you want something really fancy and automatic. Um, you can grind it to your specific need, so you can do it as an espresso grind, which is very fine, almost like a powder. You can do it to a percolator grind, which is more coarse, right, because uh, of, the of, of the of the recycling. The, yes. Or you can do it for a drip, which is sort of in between, okay, those two, two extremes. Um, I, the only coffee grinder that I have, and I've used it for years, is this Braun. Um, it's just a small one, and frankly, the longer you leave the blades twirling, the more uh, uh, fine the grind becomes. So it's just kind of an eyeball. Again, we're doing, we're making four cups of coffee. One, two, three, four. And then, like our mama always said, one for good measure. Okay. Okay. So there's our whole beans that we're going to be we're going to be using. And you know, it's funny, Ralph. You probably know people like this too. I know people who spend five dollars or more a day on coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's great. If you know, there's all these coffee places out there, and if somebody makes a coffee that you just love have at it. More power to you. Yep. Um, and I, you know what? We have coffee out sometimes too, but I'll tell you what, you know, uh, it's fun to make coffee at home and to make it exactly like you, just how you like To it. your own specifications. So I don't know if you can get a shot of this, Ralph. It's going to be a little noisy. So there's our, our, our whole beans and we're just going to... You can see here they're on the coarse side. I'm going to let it go another few seconds. I will tell you though, the difference when you, uh, as opposed to buying a can of coffee and the difference between doing what we're doing, which is kind of grinding our own, this is so much, this releases so mm. much more of the oils, of the and the flavors, the aromas. Oils. You know what I mean? It's It really makes, Super does make a difference. Yeah. Okay, so now there's our coffee. It's in, ready to go. Our water's about done. Let's see how we're doing over here on our percolator. Yeah, how do you know when this is done? Well, it'll just shut off. It'll stop percolating, okay? So, the other thing we're going to do, one other method is we're going to do our espresso method, okay? Do you call that a pressure? This is a vac. This vacuum. works by vacuum. The water actually goes in this lower chamber and as it comes to a boil, it gets sucked up into the upper chamber. But as it comes up, it goes through the espresso coffee. Okay? And we'll get to that. That'll be the final part. Okay, this just shut off. So now we have our hot water. You can see. Now, some people say it should be 185 degrees exactly, that that is the perfect temperature. Uh, to extract all the blah blah. Okay, you know what? You got a thermometer and you want to do all that, knock yourself out. Okay? We're in the morning, it's usually like, I just got to get this coffee you can, made. You can barely find your slippers, right? <laughs> so as soon, as soon as the water boils, then you know what? I take it off, and now we're going to do. Here we go, Ralph. So you just we're gently gonna pour, pour it yeah. carefully so it doesn't. You can see the coffee sort of blooms. Do you see the. You see that stuff on the top? Look what's happening, okay? Mm, it's sort yes. of releasing all of its oils and its flavors. And I'm just, again, it immediately nowadays... It dripping down. Nowadays, they call this the pour -o, a pour-over. But this is good? really a drip, okay? Mm. And I'm just going to... I kind of do it in a little circular fashion so that it sort of... gets... It sort of equal, stirs equally, it a little bit. Yeah. Equally uh, saturated. We want to We want to give all those beans a chance to... Do their thing. Okay. Give now we're just gonna chance. let <laughs> we're gonna let that just drip all the way through. Again, this is a Chemex. Works exactly the same way. It, it is really almost, I think, a piece of art. It's really beautiful. Now is this an it old technique or more modern? This actually has been around since the late 40s. Uh. Um, but this the, the the filter part, the filter part is sort of built into the design, see? Right. Where this has a separate thing that goes on like top. Like a little attachment. Mm -hmm. 
So but they're basically the same idea. It's the same idea. It's completely the same idea. Okay. All right. We're gonna let that finish dripping. We're gonna let the percolator finish perking, and we're gonna come back and have some delicious hot coffee. Okay, Ralph. Our percolator has stopped perking. Our drip has stopped dripping. All right. Okay. So. Rule number one, regardless of the method that you're using, uh, when the coffee is done brewing by whatever method, get the grounds out of the way, okay? Because what happens is some of those bitter oils that are in the grounds will continue to drip into the coffee oh. and you don't want that, okay? So um, I'm going to... That's what makes coffee start tasting old. And yes, so you just get the grounds out from on top of the coffee. Wow, I'm learning good stuff today. So here, I'm going to, because this is very hot, we're going to take this out. Okay. Okay, and we'll put it over here. So you just walk it over to the sink, but the thing is getting it out of the coffee so it yes. doesn't continue to, uh, to make drip, the, those. drip or make the coffee uh, stronger or more bitter than you want it. Now, one, one thing I will say about Perk Coffee, and the thing we love about it the most, it's hot. And I mean hot. Ralph, you don't like your coffee super hot, I know. Sometimes you'll even put a little ice cream in it just to <laughs> take cool, the edge off. Cool it down, yeah. But um, I do. I like my coffee hot because I drink it sort of slowly, and so that way it doesn't get cold cool down know, by too the time much, yeah. I get to the bottom. So here we are. And isn't that a nice little cup? Let's uh, let's just try. Oh, look how pretty that is! You can kind of tell by the density or the, the coloration as it's coming out if it's strong enough or, mm -hmm. or too weak or whatever. But again, this is to our tastes, my tastes especially. I could never drink that right out of the pot like that. It would burn my mouth. Oh, that's nice. Good. Nothing. Boy, like a good cup of coffee. Nothing like a good cup of so coffee. So this is. Um, so here's our per here's our perk. Perk. Okay. Pretty perk. Okay. Now, we've got. Uh, I got a mug here. Yeah, for, you do. Yeah. Oh, that mug. Get <laughs> yeah, this mug. Okay, for our drip. Yeah, our drip method. And. Mmm. Oh. Again, a different. Uh, it's not as hot, I'll tell you that, as, as the Perk coffee. Um, of course, it was a completely different coffee bean method. that we used. Oh, the bean, the yeah. method was different. Delicious. Is there anything you can say about the difference between the two? Um, or is, there, is it just more in the bean and the flavor? Yeah, it really... The, and the this, temperature. Yeah, the, I think that the, 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 the Perk coffee has a little bit of a, um, a little deeper flavor again because the coffee is the is recirculated through itself but i don't think the drip coffee might be smoother okay and i don't know if it's method or material it's one of those two things but but anyway so here's our here's our drip okay right there now what's next what's next is espresso okay so um you need a machine. Um, you, you'll see many different versions of this. There's sort of a, one that is sort of a angular machine. It's a very, uh, oh, yeah. very famous one, uh, Italian. But they all operate pretty much the same. Now, of course, they don't make a ton, but nobody drinks a big pot of espresso. I mean, unless you're really wired. Uh, but let's let's look at the parts of the espresso maker. Is that the the design you're describing that uh, not this one but the other one of the, the the italian designer who just died and had his ashes put in in a large one yes yeah the man who designed it just passed away wow. so here's what we've got we've got the lower chamber which is where the water goes in okay you'll notice it has a little uh this is a little release spout okay but it also serves as a marker that when you put the water inside this chamber, you always have to keep it below, below. the release. Okay. okay. Then, this is where the coffee goes. The coffee grounds go in here, okay? 
and then you'll see see the size of the holes there and then this goes on top you'll notice the screen here these holes are much smaller because espresso I've got some here so is it, it's is a very different fine. it's a different coffee altogether too for espresso. Uh, well it's usually a very dark roast um, a very dark roasted coffee and more finely ground there are two yes very finely ground like powder here are two that that I like to use one actually is from Mexico uh, and this is actually good. I even will make this in a drip sometimes. Uh, the Bust Cafe Bustello. And then this is an Italian uh, espresso. Okay? But if... Um, let me get a spoon here. And you can see it's very, very fine. Very, yes. Look at that. It's almost like a powder. Okay? So, you'll notice the spout here. We're going to put our water in there. Again, I'm using cold filtered water and we're going to just fill it up to just under the belly button. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it like that. Ooh, I overfilled it a little bit. No there problem. We, we just empty it out. Okay. Now we're going to put in our coffee. So we're going to do this and we're going to fill it up there's sort of see do you see that sort of this line here is that your that's uh, the marker the guide yeah okay. so we're gonna put that in there okay so the water when it boils will come up through the spout this is the vacuum part will come up through the spout through that coffee through that screen and then through there and into the upper chamber. Oh, wow. Okay? There's a gasket here, so that keeps everything nice and pressurized. Wow. So I'm so going to screw this, screw this on here. There we go. And I'm going to put it on the stove. And we'll let it do its thing. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy some more of my coffee. Now, with our espresso, which you really need, and I don't know what I did with them. I think, I think they're at the cottage. They have the small, what we call a demitasse, a small coffee cup, very small, um, because this will make probably two of those. So what I like to do, since we don't have the demitasse uh, cups, or I can't find them, <laughs> is sometimes I like to make a... Uh, Cafe au lait, or, or you can make it what they call a cafe American, like in Paris, Ralph. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is basically an espresso that's diluted with something, okay? Because they'll tell you that, you know, Americans drink such weak coffee. So you could take your, take your espresso uh, and you can have basically the espresso with the same amount of warm milk, and then you have a nice cafe au lait. Or, you know, you can have it with, with hot water and espresso equal amounts and have a Cafe Americano. Oh, so that's what that so is. So that's what we'll do. Okay. But if you like you to drink your espresso true. Full strength. Full strength, then you have it in a little demi tasse. Gee, I just don't have one. I thought I had that's one. That's okay. Folks know what they are. Uh, they're, those yeah. little long yeah. shapes. They're, they're small. just little tiny coffee cups. And, uh, you know, some people, I know when I have it that way, I need to put a couple little sugars in it. It's more the traditional way. <clears throat> so this is starting to heat up. You can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we're going to let it do its thing. And pretty soon we'll have our, our espresso coffee. So we've done percolator. We've done a nice, beautiful, pour-over drip style coffee and now we're making espresso by no means comprehensive but just uh, a little bit of a coffee party here it's the cavalcade cavalcade, cavalcade coffee clatch right here <laughs> is it ready can you hear it yeah yeah so what's happening is now that water is boiling I'm like, is that how you know it's ready just when it starts making that boiling noise or does yeah. it whistle or anything it doesn't whistle okay when it stops making the noise then we'll know that the water has moved from the bottom to the upper chamber. Oh. There it is. See, look at it. 
I don't know if the, the, the camera's not picking it up. Yeah. It's so dark, but I'm still not quite sure if I'm understanding what's happening. So you listen for it to stop? Yes. It's kind of... And then you turn the flame or the fire off? Yes, which I'm just taking it down right now. But it seems like you really have to keep an eye on this you, particular You do have method. to keep an eye on it. Again, you could spend hundreds thousands of dollars on an espresso maker an automatic espresso maker and and not not worry about it if you want to spend twelve dollars on an espresso maker this is what you're gonna get okay we are we are there beautiful okay I'm gonna take this off okay and now um, I'm gonna use this cup here Ralph uh, to show. Now this is of course going to be very dark. Are you ready? Ready. Yeah. See that? It's like motor oil. <laughs> but oh, uh, now this is the this is the Italian uh, espresso, and you can smell the yeah, difference. Yeah, very rich. Darker roast, stronger. Oh my gosh! Yes, that that'll. Put It'll some hair in your up. put some hair in your chest. You know, this uh, this might need a little milk. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm putting in cold milk. It should be hot, but we're going to make a we're going to make a cafe au lait here. Uh, au lait. Oh, so a different kind of au lait. Yes. But there we have our. Oh, that's nice. Okay. So there's our there's our espresso. So, you know, super caffeinated, uh, super robust uh, method of doing coffee. So, you know what? All these wonderful options to us, these are, you know, sort of uh, our own methods that we like to use. You might have your own methods too to make the coffee to your own tastes. And um, we didn't even talk about French press. Uh, or, Turkish coffee, or Turkish coffee, or, Middle Eastern. Yeah, there's there's so many other uh, methods. Uh, uh, there's another kind of vacuum method for more conventional coffee. Anyways, we're just scratching the surface, having a fun coffee party. I don't know why they say ca caffeine makes you talk a lot. I don't feel like I'm talking a lot. I just feel like there's a lot of <laughs> different methods here that we're showing, and we're having a lot of there, fun. That's all. Well, there is, <laughs> and and here now these are all percolators. Uh, on a larger scale, right? So when we hit entertain and have parties, you know what? We like to make oh, coffee yeah. in these and keep everybody uh, happy. Making good coffee does not have to be complicated. That's making the moral of the story. Making good coffee does not have to be expensive. And making good coffee, um, you don't have to be a coffee snob, okay? The, th the best coffee is the coffee that you like. That's what's to remember, okay? So whether you get it at a fancy uh, coffee shop or you go to, you get it through... Uh, Dunkin' Donuts. The, on, you order it online from somewhere or the donut shop or, you know what, at your local supermarket in the can. If it's the coffee you like, make it using the best tried and true methods possible and you know what enjoy your it's coffee. all about what you like but exactly. this is a, a good good message there kevin so yeah thank you for hipping me to some new ideas on coffee that i hadn't considered before i hope you all enjoyed our little what'd you call it coffee clutch coffee clutch coffee clutch on so, cavalcade of food so you know what we had a great time actually talking about coffee and making coffee is and i i hope you had a good time being with us and you know what We'll see you next time right here on Cavalcade of Food. Keep perking, everybody. Perk you later.